All right, now on to the next part. I have removed the fluorocarbon leader for purpose of the demonstration because it's easier to see the following knots being tied with the braid than it is with the fluorocarbon. Now we're going to get into getting all the accessory equipment and the hook on the line. First thing we're going to put on, we're going to put on a rubber bobber stop. One of these guys. Real easy to do. Just pick one, put your line through the little metal loop here, like so. Fold it over, grab the rubber stopper, pull it off on your line, and there you have it. Slide it up out of the way. Next, we're going to grab a 316th ounce tungsten worm weight or a tungsten bullet weight, whichever you refer to call it as. And we're going to slip that on the line. Now one other thing that I put on before I put my hook on, I've started using this last year. I started using it in stained water and I actually used it in clear water too. And it didn't, didn't hurt me in clear water. I don't know if it, if it helped me, but it didn't hurt me. And that is a little red Carolina bead. So we're going to put one of those on here as well. And if we can get it in there. Third time's a charm there, okay? So, now we've got bobber stop, our bullet sinker, and a Carolina, red Carolina bead. Now, I use Gamagatsu extra wide gap worm hooks. The knot that I use to attach them, I use a snell knot. So I'll show you how to tie a snell knot onto an extra wide gap worm hook. Start off with, you want to hold your hook in this orientation. Take your line, you're going to put your line in through the top of the eye like so. Pull a bunch down. Okay. Lay a, lay a strip across in line with the shank of the hook. Hold that with your fingers. Make a loop. And bring that loop across the shank of the hook. So you should have two pieces of line in line with the shank of the hook. Hold that with your fingers like so. Take this tag end, this is from the loop that you just made. You're going to wrap that around the shank and around that loop about six or seven times, keeping everything in line as you're wrapping it around the shank and the loop. Okay. So we're going to go around that about six or seven times keeping your loops, your uh, wraps in line with each other in order. You don't want them twisted up and tangled up about well, six or seven times. Okay. Once you get that done, you should be at this point right here. This is where you should be. We have went in through the top of the eye. We went across the shank made a loop, wrapped around the shank and that loop six or seven times. Now we're going to hold on to our tag end and the hook between our fingers. Grab your main line and you're going to start to pull. You're not going to pull it completely tight, just enough to snug everything up a little bit. Okay, once you get that snugged up, you're going to take this whole thing here you're going to slide it up the shank of the hook. You're going to work it up over the bend and up to the eye. Once you get it up to the eye, now we hold our tag end in the hook and we cinch that knot down. And you have a completed snell knot on an extra wide gap worm hook.
pull that nice and tight for you and show you the knot. So there's your Snell knot on an extra wide gap worm hook. Now we simply trim the tag end and we're done. The reasons why I use a Snell knot. There's two reasons I prefer a Snell knot over a improved clench knot or whatever other type of knot you prefer to use. The first one being the physics behind the knot. Okay. When your lure is in the water, say everything, you know, assuming that everything is going proper, should be oriented this way in the water. So say you got a Texas rig worm down here. You're down here, you're fishing, you're fishing on the bottom here, and, and here's here's your worm doing this little dance here. Okay. Fish comes up and it takes that lure in its mouth. Big old bass hooks onto it, latches it on nice and tight. When you set that hook and you pull on this, and that line gets tight, because that line is coming from the back side of the hook, coming up through the eye and coming out the top, because of the way that line is oriented, when you pull tight on it, it's going to naturally pivot that hook like this, driving the point of this hook into the roof of the fish's mouth, giving you a nice good hook set. Since I've started using the snail knot, I feel like my hook sets have improved sufficient, significantly. Um, and I believe that that is, I truly believe that that's why, is uh, the physics behind what happens when you set the hook with the way the line is oriented in it. Um, there's nothing wrong with an improved clench knot. Uh, with an improved clench knot, your line is coming off the end of the eye here. So when, you, when that line goes straight, it just pulls straight. Um, if for some reason something happens and you you know your line could be tied to where it's actually falling down off the eye, um, when you set the hook, um, that in that little split second that that line has to pivot up could cause the hook to pivot this way. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a scientist. I'm not a physicist. A physicist, I'm just a fisherman. But that's one of the reasons why I use it. The second reason is your knot is down on the shank of the hook here before the first bend. When you have a, 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 a lure Texas rig down here, it's going to be covering up that knot, helping protect that knot from abrasions. Just helps keep the knot protected, essentially. I mean, what more do you want? It helps protect the knot. So. We'll throw that on here just to cover up the point of the hook so I don't hook myself. Safety, folks. Safety. So we have that tied. Now we are going to slide our bobber stop down to the hook. So now our weight is pegged at the hook. 